On today's episode of Locked on Angels, we're discussing who will be in the bullpen to start the season, recapping the games from the weekend, and we're sharing what Mike Trout said about himself this spring so far. It's time to get Locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked on Angels. You are Locked on Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. We thank you for making Lockdown Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcast, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Lockdown Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, what are you waiting for? Please subscribe and become a Lockdown Everydayer. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. And today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. You can make every moment more with FanDuel. And new customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Happy Monday to you, and thank you for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every single day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Hey, Mike, we are here Monday through Friday, every single weekday, talking Angels baseball all the way through the season. So we're excited to get into some real games at the end of this week, starting Thursday. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we appreciate you being here with us every single day as a locked on every day or on today's show. We're recapping the weekend games and talking about Mike Trout's spring training. But first the angels made some roster moves, uh, some pretty important moves to be made here, Mike. Let's get into talking about those. Yeah, Levon Soto was optioned. Caleb Hamilton, Willie Calhoun, and future Hall of Famer Cole Fontenelle were reassigned to <laughs> minor league camp. And so, Johnny, what does this mean for somebody like Miguel Sano or Adrianza and that last bench spot? Because there's been a lot of discussion and a, and a lot of benefits for both guys. Sano's got history. He's a former all-star. He's yeah. got a lot of pop. He can play first and third. Adrianza knows Ron Washington. He can kind of play all over the infield and he's right. been sneaky good with his bat. And he had a couple of suicide squeezes this last week. Right. And so he brings a bit of flexibility to wash. Sano brings more power and veteran experience. So who do you think gets that last spot and why? I think it's going to be Sano. I think because he can play the corners, I think that he can displace Sean Owell if he begins to struggle against lefties, which doesn't seem to be the case. Right. We'll talk about Sean O'Well a little bit later, but at the same time, I think that if you you want to get run down off of his feet, you want to have a reliable option in Miguel Sano over at third base. Mike, it's certainly better than Renjifo over at third base, yeah. not a great defender yeah. over there. I'm of the opinion that if the Angels roll with Zach Neto at shortstop as your number one, and then Renjifo backs him up at shortstop, which is... Not the best option, but I sure. think it's a suitable option um, when Zach Neto needs to get off of his feet. But that's implying that Zach Neto wants to get off of his feet, sure. right? And so <laughs> I think that guy is going to play as many games as he possibly can. I know that there's some injuries that they need to be careful of because he did get hurt last year, but he did come into spring feeling 100%. He says he's 100%. He's playing like he's 100%. So I think at this point, I think if you – Roll with Zach Neto as your number one shortstop, and any day he needs off, you have Louis Renhifo to play shortstop. Then that gives you the option of putting Sano on the bench. He can play the corners. I like the added power. I know that the Angels lost a lot of power uh, in their lineup in terms of no longer having like Shohei Otani and whatnot, but I think you have enough there with Sano. Not that he's replacing Otani by any means, but sure. between him and a full season of Trout. And Logan O'Hoppy being healthy and adding some pop, Taylor Ward. I think that there's enough pop in this lineup to go around. And I think Miguel Sano just adds to that. Plus, if you've got him coming off the bench in a pinch hitting situation where he can be a threat, perhaps to an opposite handed hitter or pitcher, I should say, uh, then that would be an intimidating situation, I think, where Sano could easily rip a home run coming off the bench uh, on the pitching side. The angels optioned Andrew Wance to triple a salt Lake, which wasn't a surprise just because yeah. as a bullpen piece, he wasn't super effective and he was kind of that swing man, but I know that they're stretching him out right. and that might be the stretching out move. Here was the move that I thought was surprising. It, it caught my attention. Ben Joyce 
went all the way to double a rocket city. Does that surprise you? It doesn't surprise me. I think that he could use some time down there in terms of, you know, working on the things that he was working on in spring training in terms of location and not emphasizing the strikeout. I know that he's got a ton of power in that arm. He's, you know, above 100 more often than not with his fastball. But I think that there's some things that he could continue to work on in terms of inducing ground outs because, Mike, remember he struggled his first two spring outings and then he kind of makes that adjustment to, hey, just give these guys your best and see right. if they can put it in play. And when right. they put it in play, it's usually a ground out. Make so I think it. that's something you want to hone in on with Ben Joyce. Plus, he's got options, Mike. So yeah. if any of these guys aren't working out in the majors uh, down the line, you know that you can turn to Ben Joyce. And the same thing with Andrew Wentz. Like you said, I think him being stretched out is the plan here. But I think you and I had the discussion a few weeks ago about Ben Joyce and what they would do with him. I think it's a good move to yeah. start him in the minor leagues. I know that we talked about maybe AAA, but I think AA is better because, again, it's the more competitive team and yeah. the more competitive league. And it makes sense for him to get that seasoning, if you will, down in double A. Uh, the one thing I was surprised with is Drew Pomeranz uh, mm -hmm. accepting his re requesting and getting his release. Sam Blum of The Athletic reported that he had an opt out and he used it. I'm disappointed by that because as a veteran lefty to kind of go into this bullpen alongside Matt Moore. Now the only lefty option you have is Jose Suarez, who's more of a long relief guy as opposed to somebody like Drew Pomeranz, who could be kind of a second to Matt Moore. So I was disappointed to see that he asked for his release. So now it looks like the last two bullpen spots are down to Jose Soriano, Hunter Strickland, who continues to throw the ball well, and Gio Zuniga. It sounds like Soriano may start in the minors to also work on getting stretched out as yeah. a starter. In fact, yeah. Mike, here's his uh, starting numbers this spring, he went 14 and a third innings pitched, a 440 ERA, 15 hits, three walks, 19 strikeouts, and one home run. We'll get into his outing from over the weekend in our next segment. But Mike, the last two bull bullpen spots, are they going to Strickland and Zuniga at this point? It seems like it. And here's what's really fascinating about this conversation is that they sent down a top prospect in Ben Joyce to double A so that he could work on some things. And yeah. last year they brought him up because we needed him to work in the bullpen because yeah. we didn't have the depth. Same and with so, Sam, Sam Bachman and Chase yes. Silseth as well. Yeah. So, so good on Perry Manassian for going and getting what he got this off season, even though we weren't thrilled with the, the non moves of some of the big names out there, it seems like all indications are he's got some really good guys in this pen that have the opportunity to really impress and perform this year there was a great tweet from our friends over at the angels win podcast where they had the stats of the bullpen guys and they called it the barry enright effect and they mm -hmm. said that you can see the impact that enright has had on these guys because the numbers were good some of the eras were inflated because there was a few bad innings but overall numbers were lots of strikeouts uh the whip was really low and these guys were improving each outing, including Estevez at the end of the bullpen. He's really figured some things out. And again, he's somebody that in spring training tries a lot of things. And so I don't see any any scenario where it's not Zuniga and Strickland. I don't know if yeah. anybody's going to sneak in there. I think those are the last two guys. And I think it might be a really good, good move. And with Barry Enright being the pitching coach, Maybe Hunter Strickland finds the magic that he had with Tampa Bay. And then when we traded mm -hmm. for him and he fell apart, maybe we finally have somebody that can figure out the keys to how this guy is effective because so far in the spring, he's been really effective, Johnny. You missed one of the big stats from that Angels win tweet, and it was the reduction in walks. It was yes. these guys are not walking the well, I left of it for you to for talk a change. About. That's, I'm yeah, exactly. Brother. I knew I knew that you were gonna, <laughs> you know, alley oop that one to me, and you knew I I'd, I'd slam dunk that. It's a volley. Again, you gotta spike it, John. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's it just goes to show that there is some fundamental changes taking place in terms of throwing strikes, getting at the hitters more quickly, in terms of getting into favorable counts for yeah. the pitchers and reducing those walks, and that's huge because walks always come back to bite the Angels. And to your point, Mike, the Angels have the opportunity to let guys develop in the minor leagues. And if you want Jose Soriano to be a starter, then commit to it. Then you have to commit and say, okay, 
We're going to send him down. He's going to continue to stretch out. He's going to continue to work on things because we have enough arms at the major league level, at least, at least to start the season, they have Mm -hmm. enough arms right in the bullpen. I think that's a, a big step forward in terms of the angels, not desperately calling up guys and, needing them to come in and be reinforcement. Mike looks like Jake Marisnik is sticking around, which yeah, I so am actually really excited about. He could have requested his release, but he's going to remain with the organization. He said at the end of the day, you don't focus on the roster. You focus on fine tuning your game, getting ready for the season. You can't look over your shoulder. You look forward. You just stay in the moment. Yeah. By the way, he was safe last night when he, when Oh, hundred totally percent. We're safe. already, we're already starting. <laughs> With the New York umpires, oh, yeah. who, who who is it again? Oh, Angels, uh, out. Let's yeah. call it out. Terrible. <laughs> Wash did say about Marisnik. He said he's doing a great job. He's hitting some bombs. He's running the bases. He's playing some defense. Defense. He's been doing exactly what he needs to do. And in spring training, he's really been impressive. I think if he can stay around, John, and be a depth piece for this outfield. I know we got five guys out there, and so there may not be room for him to break in unless there's a couple of injuries. But I'll just wait having- for it. <laughs> well, hopefully it doesn't happen, but having him around, it seems like he seem, he's a, he's a joyful guy. What I really like about him too, John, is he seems to be, and, I, and this is just eye test, but he seems to be a bit clutch, you know, like he, yeah. he can come through at sure. good moments. And so I, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe there are some maneuvering where he stays around or he shows up later on this season, but I'm glad, I'm glad that he's going to be a part of the depth for this angels team in 2024. You know, who's not glad about it is uh Jonathan Lucroy, but that's a, uh... Yeah, that's like five years ago now. It's Oop, fine. Hey, <laughs> thanks for making Locked on Angels your first listen every single day. Coming up, we're recapping the weekend games, talking about Jose Soriano's start and the highlights in the game from last night against the Dodgers, the beginning of the Exhibition Freeway Series. We'll talk about all of that coming right up. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Now, you might have a busted bracket already with the tournament, or you might be a genius and you might be looking really, really good. My, my gut says either North Carolina or Purdue, Johnny. What, I think that what was the two... team. What was the team that busted everybody's bracket? Oakland. Is that who it was? I think, I think that's who. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who? Right. Yeah. Well, here's, here's the good news. Even if your bracket is busted, FanDuel will allow you to still win and you can even go against the team that maybe you selected and possibly win. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing with America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on the point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, and you can bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. This is the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Look, I know every morning you turn on Fox Sports or ESPN, and everybody's shouting. And what are you talking about? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Skip, skip. Well, he doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> do that anymore. Uh, you got to turn down the volume from all the shouting. But listen, if you make the switch to Lockdown Sports today, it's a free twenty four seven sports streaming channel programmed for you every single day to bring you the biggest stories. Without all the screaming, so Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. It's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. John, you said it in the first segment, and I think it was super appropriate, where if they're going to commit to Soriano being a starter, they need to give him time to continue to develop as a starter. Mm-hmm. And he showed something on Friday. Now I know it was a split squad game and a lot of the starters for the Sox weren't in there. So keep that in mind with yeah, these numbers. That, that was what I was going to caveat with was yeah. he looked great, but it was against the the B team, if right. you will. <laughs> right. Yeah. He did strike out eight. He didn't walk anybody. That's huge, right? That's huge. And that's important because whether it's a B team or an A team or whatever, no walks is fantastic. So it doesn't matter who you're throwing again. Yeah, exactly. Right. Through 71 pitches, 54 strikes. That's also a really good stat. He didn't have a three ball count, John, another good indicator that he was throwing strikes. He hit a hundred miles an hour with his fastball. Wash said that was outstanding. That had to have been the best outing of all of spring training to throw 71 pitches in six innings and no walks. You just don't see that often. Now, 
there hasn't been any word and, and Wash hasn't really given any indication as to what they plan to do with Soriano, whether he remains a starter or a reliever. Obviously, I'm in the in the category and so are you that if they're going to continue to stretch him out, they, they need to move in that direction because if he can be a, a really good starter for this team and add some depth, man, let's go for it, right? And they have a lot of flexibility in the bullpen with, with Cisnero and Simber and Estevez. Those guys looked really good on Friday. They pitched the final three innings and they faced just one hitter over the minimum. So Angels, I think there's going to be a lot of games like that this year, honestly. There's going to be a lot yeah. of games where it is 2 nothing, and the Angels had really good pitching. The offense really didn't come through. I think even last night's game against the Dodgers, we're going to see a lot of those types of games, 5-3, to three, and and it's going to be it's going to be tight because we don't have this offense that's explosive unless Mike Trout goes off in a Trout sort of way this year. Hmm. I think that we're going to have to really uh, – nickel and dime the defense to try to score some runs but i think this bullpen is going to help keep us close are they not i think that they're going to help keep them close i'm super high on adam simber and that's somebody i was excited to see coming in to the season thinking that he was going to have a healthy spring training and the fact that he has and he looks really good he's that funky delivery submarine yep. type that uh, we all appreciated about you know jimmy hergett and his strange delivery the human glitch but you know, the league kind of caught up with Herget and he just wasn't as effective as he was two years ago. And so it's nice to have kind of a fresh version of that in Adam Simber. We'll see how long it lasts. Yes. But yeah. for the time being, I think it's a great option to have. Mike Rendon went hitless and two at bats in this one. After this game, he's five for 24, uh, 208 average, eight walks, giving him a 424 on base percentage. So a low average and a high on base percentage. Mike Trout was 0 for 1 with a walk after this game on Saturday or Friday. Uh, he was 9 for 42, a 214 average with 18 yeah. strikeouts. Trout was interviewed and he said that he feels ready for the season. He said the numbers aren't there, but he says he feels good. And that's what he wanted to, uh, that's what he wanted to do to start this year. Look, you look around the league, you see guys with like Matt Olson with terrible batting averages and right. whatnot. So right. don't worry about batting average. It really is. Hey, do you feel ready to go this season? Uh, Adrianza had a suicide squeeze, which you mentioned last segment in the fourth inning and knocked in the first run of the game. The Angels used the squeeze twice last week. So again, you're starting to see a little bit more small ball being played on Ron Washington's halos. And I yeah. love that. Yeah. On Saturday, uh, Sean Owell got things started with his second home run of the spring. It was a good sign because he had some back stiffness, came in and crushed that pitch. John, Power of the mustache, baby. It, yeah, that's what I was going to say, man. There's something There's something with that stash. Him and Canning have the stash and a few <laughs> of the guys. They should start growing it up. Make it a thing, guys. Make it a Heck thing, yeah. right? Uh, the score did get out of hand in this game. Luis Garcia had a tough outing, uh, but Caden Dana gave up a lot of the bulk of the runs as well. So this is one of those games. They had Matt Moore as an opener. This was one of those games where they were just trying things out, but Nelson Rada hit a home run in this game as well. And we're going to talk a lot about him on tomorrow's show, but this kid looks phenomenal. Looks fantastic. Can't wait until he is ready to be in the major leagues. A little concerned about Luis Garcia and his last two outings, considering yeah. he is going to be in this bullpen. And so you kind of hope that, Hey, it's a learning experience. Can we make some adjustments here? Can we identify what went wrong here? But Mike, I go back to Nolan Shonowell hitting that home run early on in the game. And it was just great to see because the guy just gets the, the biggest criticism for him is just being able to lift the ball. And it was great to see him take a pitch that was up and put enough angle on it to to launch it out. It was a, yeah. a it was a strong home run. It was. And so I am really looking forward to seeing what he's going to be able to do this season. It looks like looks like he might still be pegged in that number 2 spot mm -hmm. rather than being the leadoff guy that we all thought he might be. Are you comfortable with that at this point of spring training or do you think that he should be number one leading off. I think two is fine. And I think that you can have somebody like an Aaron Hicks at the top of the order. And even if they want to try to run with Rendon, I think the only danger with Rendon up there is that both Sean Owell and Rendon are not, are not fast. They're good yeah. base runners, but they're not fast. Right. And so I, I, I prefer to have somebody at the top that can really fly. Heck, DH Joe Adele and put him at the top, right? He hmm. gets on base and the guy flies around. I just, I, I like the flexibility with Sean Owell. I like that he can hit the ball all over the place. And I think the two hole hitter is a guy that you, you want to guarantee 
contact moment, whether it's a mm. hit or moving a, a base runner over. Angels have just had way too many strikeouts the last few years. Yeah. And with Sean, he's moving runners over. He's not necessarily going to hit into too many double plays. Neither is Rendon. And so I'm I'm up for the experiment with Rendon at the top, but I think that having Sean Owell behind him makes Rendon at the top a bit of a threat because you know that the guy that's coming up next is going to make contact whether you like it or not. And then you've got Mike Trout, and the ideal situation is you got a first and second or a first and third with Trout at the plate and nobody out. And I think what's interesting about Rendon is the fact that he takes – so many pitches that when you're in the on deck circle or you're Mike Trout watching from the dugout, you got to pay attention to that stuff. And so if a guy is mixing in his entire repertoire, trying to get Rendon out, even if Rendon gets the out or grounds out or what have you, it is a success in the sense that at the start of the game against a starting pitcher, you get to see a lot of his repertoire yeah. early on. It helps guys behind him identify the pitches so that they can have kind of a, a strategy once they get up to the dish. Locked on angels is brought to you by Amazon fire TV. Amazon fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers an amazing viewing experience, whether it's opening weekend for baseball, which is this weekend. I can't wait. Or you're right in the middle of the college basketball tournament. You're going to want to have a Fire TV. They recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. And that includes all of us at Locked On and a lot of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV allows you to dive into the game analysis, highlights, and more, and they're going to keep you up to date on all of the latest in the world of sports. They also have great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos. Visit Amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Again, that's Amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. You can check out fire TV channels on fire TV and Alexa devices. One more time, Amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Mike, we had our first game of the exhibition freeway series against the Dodgers. Uh, on Sunday night, they played at Dodger stadium and man, here in Pasadena, it was pouring rain right before the game was going to mm. start. So I thought, they're like not many miles away from me. I wonder if they're even going to play this game. Fortunately, they were able to play the game and play it all the way through without any delays. But it was looking pretty dicey there for a minute. But the interesting thing about this game was that all of the conversation was on the game. And yeah. there yeah. certainly weren't any outside influences or outside factors that anybody was talking about. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but what's interesting is that it feels like we may have gotten a decent preview of what this lineup could look like every day uh, as the Angels start their season. So yeah. let me run it down here for you. Rendon, he did lead off in this one. Aaron Hicks was batting second. Mike Trout, of course, batting third, which, again, I really like. I'm so glad that he's there. Taylor Ward was batting cleanup. Brandon Drury was behind him at fifth. Moniak was DHing in this one. He bat sixth. Hey, number six. Hey, how about that? Who said Logan that? Logan Ohapi <laughs> was batting seventh. Luis Renjifo played second base in this one, and he was batting eighth. And then Zach Neto was down in the nine hole. Canning got the start in this one. Why don't you talk about his start in this one? Yeah, he really struggled in that second inning, was taken out, and then brought back. Johnny, he recovered really well, though, because he struck out seven in five innings, and he pitched really well against the Betts, Otani, Freeman, top of the order. Here's mm -hmm. my question. Did Canning struggle because it was an issue on his end, or was this a, a really good Dodgers lineup that just found a way to get some hits off of Canning? That's a good question, because there were there were some hits that, I, I hate using this phrase, but they kind of dinky do their way in. I mean, I, look, I, like I know that. the Angels had like, <laughs> the Angels had like four infield singles so yeah. i can't i don't have any room to talk about dinky dudes but right. i will say in terms of the dodgers going against canning it felt like a lot of stuff was falling in in the weirdest of places against griffin canning and look i know you <laughs> you want to get guys out on soft contact but sometimes it just bites you in the butt and then you have a play where and like brandon drury runs out to foul territory and misses that easy pop-up because yeah. it's just an awkward it's an awkward route. It's an awkward direction. It, it was stuff like that to me that felt like I feel like Canning did better in this one than perhaps the line score says. Now, again, he got into trouble in that second inning and he got the uh, the gimme 
yeah. if you will, where he was able to come out and come back in. So I think, honestly, Mike, I think it's a combination of both. I think that he started out that first inning really well. He was efficient. He got through Betts and Otani and Freeman very quickly. And then the 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 rest of those hits were just kind of trouble for everybody. And to see him come back out and strike out seven was just fantastic to me. So look, it's Griffin Canning. He's going to slot in at three or four or what yeah. have you. Yeah. And, and he's going to be consistently Griffin Canning, whether right. that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think you know what you're going to get from him. It's not going to be a, a total blow up or a, a total, you know, ace eight innings pitch, you know, three hits, no runs kind of thing. It's going to be somewhere right in the middle. And so again, I think the way I'm going to put it is he's going to be consistently Griffin Canning and whatever yeah. that means to you. There you go. <laughs> well, what, how I would interpret that Johnny is six innings, four to five runs, maybe six to seven strikeouts, no walks or at least one walk, right? Angels are still in the game. He had a really bad third inning or a really bad, first inning but right. then he comes in and continues to do what he does he's going to be griffin canning and he had a, a few of those starts last year i think it was barry enright that said watching him from the diamondbacks dugout when he was struggling against the diamondbacks he had an inning where he blew up but then he went seven i believe in that game and mm -hmm. that was really impressive for barry enright to watch him do that that he recovered so well and i think that griffin canning is the kevin apier of the angels in 2024 and mm. Kevin here in Oh two was that guy where he would come in and eat innings. Wouldn't always do it so efficiently would have games where you're like, come on, what are you doing? Right? So <laughs> take this guy out, but he's going to eat up those innings. He's the Dan Heron of this, mm. this team in the early 2010s, right? He's going to continue to be who he is. And he's going to be somebody that's not going to frustrate us too much, but we're not going to be super impressed at the end of the year with his stats. Although I could see him getting double digits and wins. Perhaps he gets 10, 11 wins this season, but he's somebody that I'm going to be keeping an eye on as the regular season starts. And speaking of the regular season, John, what are your thoughts? I mean, we got two games left. Are you, are you ready for the regular season? Is there anything that you are looking for in these next two games? Where, where's your mind at as a locked on every day and as a longtime angel fan? I understand Taylor Ward at cleanup, but it does concern me because I know that he's had success there and perhaps it's, you know, one of those things that you write off as it's spring training and he's still figuring things out. I just, I, <laughs> I don't know if it's Taylor Ward and his baby face, but it just doesn't seem like a threat mm. at cleanup, Mike. Like it's yeah. just, I don't know when I, when I think of Taylor Ward, I, <laughs> yeah, a face tattoo, yes. right? Um, no, but I just I when I think of Taylor Ward, I I don't think cleanup. However, I think the numbers would argue against that because he yeah. has back cleanup in the past. It's been you know, spot. obviously when the Angels have injuries and whatnot, yeah, uh, he usually ends up in that four spot. So it is interesting to me that they're trying him out there. But at, then I look at the rest of the lineup and I think, well, if not Ward, then who? Yeah. But what I think I do like about this lineup is the fact that they kind of have that pattern of on base guy, contact guy, power guy. Mm -hmm. Now, if you get to clean up, you have kind of Ward who can be on base, hit for average, or hit a home run. He kind of does all three. Really, it's going to come down to his eye at the plate. If he's if he's drawing walks, I totally get that. But again, you don't want to put. I guess what I'm trying to say is you don't want to put pressure on a guy in the cleanup spot whose job is to drive in people if their eye at the plate isn't that great. And so they go free swinging and perhaps maybe that's the contrast here. Maybe Taylor Ward isn't that kind of free swinging guy at the same time. I just, it, the role feels weird to me. So I think I've said enough about that. You look at this lineup, what thoughts come to mind for you? I think the speed of this lineup will be utilized and capitalized on this season. Mm. Just, just oh, last sure. night. Trout getting two infield singles. I love that Mookie Betts tried to be Derek Jeter. That was yeah. that was impressive. Well, and and but. again, like we talk about all the time when people say, "Oh, Trout's regressing." Trout's regressing. Look at the sprint speed yeah. down the line. And well, and they that, talked about that on the broadcast last night. Yeah. He, last year, he was in the 90th percentile in sprint speed and the 90th percentile in hard hit percentage. He's yeah. making contact. It's just right. a lot of a lot of unlucky bounces, right? Sure. And so last night, he found the holes to be able to beat out two hits and Zach Neto did the same thing. I, I yeah. think that with Joe Adele in this lineup, Neto in this lineup, 
I think that their speed is going to put a lot of pressure on the defense. And that's going to be something that we'll need to pay attention to because it's unique to the angels since really probably the early two thousands, they haven't really utilized their speed. I think this year they're going to utilize it and we're going to see the benefit of that. We're going to see maybe some more errors made where trout ends up at third base and we're going to see a lot of, I think, sacrifice flies and moving runners over. So pay attention to that. That's what I like about this lineup. And again, Mickey Moniak at number six, we've talked about that. It gives him the opportunity to go crazy, to, to bang or to strike out, right? Like mm-hmm. he, he can, he swings hard. He almost had a home run last night. He swings hard. And I think that's the perfect spot because the sixth hole isn't a hole that you're like, man, we're counting on that guy. So it mm-hmm. allows Mickey Moniak to be dynamite. It allows him to just like light the fuse and let's see what <laughs> happens with this guy. And I, I think if you give him the chance to do that and let him be who he is, watch out because he might carry this team to start the season. I'm glad you brought up early 2000s because when I think about this lineup and there's no obvious like big bopper, we've been doing the big bopper thing since Pujols got here, yeah. you know? And I know I know we had Vladdy before that, but, but Vladdy was very good. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> But to me, High I just average. think... I just think about the fact that, yeah, if the Angels want to have success this year, they've got to get creative and they've got to find a way to, like you said, nickel and dime the defense, nickel and dime the starting pitching. Look, I'll take uh, an RBI, a, a, a RBI double play. If there's a runner on third My and God. somebody, you know, hits a, a double play, but it scores the runner from third with no outs. I mean, that happened this spring. I think Taylor Ward was the one to do that. But again, it's just like, hey, you got to run to start the game. So there you go and and take it from there. And I, like you said, I think they're going to have to nickel their nickel and dime their way to success this season. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Every day is Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV's channel app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. You can find Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and on the free Fire TV channels app. Hey, give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On Angels and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Whether you're watching or listening to today's show, come on over to YouTube, get in the comment section. It's the best way to jump in the conversation. Hey, Mike, what do we have on deck for Tuesday's show? I know the Angels prospects don't get ranked really high, but we're going to share with you an article from MLB.com that says that doesn't matter because Hmm. there are three players they want you to pay attention to that they think will rise through the Angel ranks and will catch the attention of other teams as well. So we're going to share those three players' names with you tomorrow on Locked on Angels. Looking forward to that conversation. Of course, we'll recap tonight's game against the Dodgers and get into that Shohei Otani conversation that we've been meaning to have here on Locked on Angels. So we'll talk about all of that tomorrow. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here, everybody, and we'll see you back here on Tuesday. Johnny, I wore Back to the Future shirt. I just Uh saw an article the other day that said if Marty went back in time from today, he would have to go back to 1994. Oh, 